This is Dust War Journals, episode 34, your number one stop for all news and discussion related to Dust 1947. My name is Johannes, joining me today are... Magnus, as usual, and... Well, this is of course Lada, but for this episode and this episode alone, and I know this is a bit of a stretch and a little bit tacky, but I'm going to be the cub of Wolven. Yeah, I'm sorry, Thomas, I just have to be the cub of Wolven this time. Uh, I know this is, but it, it's not what you think. Okay, and I promise <laughs> and you guys... And it's only temporary. Oh, it's only temporary. I promise you this. And okay, I see the stress on you both guys, but there'd be no taka taka in this show. I promise you. No <laughs> taka taka, whatever you, you say. Okay, it's not happening. Okay, it's not happening. Great. Yeah. Okay, yep. yeah. Good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just making that clear, okay? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, good to know as, yes, I, as I said. Please button up that shirt again, Johannes. I've seen what you've done. So, yeah, thank you. Yes, no taka taka. <laughs> All right. So, it, it seems like it's been a while again. <laughs> this mm. this uh, past month has just been a roller coaster in many ways. Uh, I think for us all. But in different ways. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah <that's> true. <laughs> so we had the European Championship, uh, mm-hmm. which we had some plans for, and not all of them worked out. Mm-hmm. Some did, though. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, that later on. Uh, but first off, let's talk some hobby time. Um, so, who wants to start? <laughs> Well, sure, I can start. Uh, I have mostly been concentrating on the new line of terrain that's come out from the uh, from RSL Gaming here in Sweden, our local gaming shop, and also now producer of uh, terrain specifically made to to fit the dust grid. Uh, so I've been building and painting stuff uh, for him, for for Martin is the name of the guy. Um, and I think uh, you can see some of that or po- probably all of what I've done so far on his website. And you can already now order stuff from it, yeah. at least from is... definitely here in Sweden. And I also think he's got deals to do European shipping. I'm not sure about rest of the world. You have to, to check out his website, possibly send him an email about that. And just ask. Yeah, and that yeah. uh, website for those who don't know is rsl-gaming.se. Yeah, and uh, so that, that, it's really cool. It's a new line of terrain. Yeah, the first and first line is a sort of deserty um, set with some buildings of different sizes and some some low walls and stuff like that. And there are already plans for more stuff uh, that is in development. So uh, I have some stuff at home that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, and I know that there will be more coming my way soon-ish <laughs> uh, with the next line, which uh, I guess I could mention it. It's, it's going to be like a, a Western, uh, Western European probably kind of theme. Splendid, splendid. So like, yeah, some, some houses and ruins and stuff, which is a European style. Very nice. That's going yeah. to make uh, all the Sverrograd players very happy. Yeah, possibly. I think so. I think so. And for uh, those who were at uh, the European Champion, we had a possibility to see some stuff uh, on a display table over there because Martin, uh, another Martin, took uh, some with him down to uh, Warsaw and it was on display there. So, and it really looks nice. I, I'm so glad that you two, uh, or your three perhaps, uh, say you, Mats, and uh, Martin, then from RSL, is uh, taking up the gauntlet to, to produce new MDF terrain uh, since uh, Thor went. Went, went crashing so to speak yeah, uh, it's, uh, I think it's really nice to have terrain that, that so easily fits the grid and I mean this terrain is, is fairly simple it don't have too many details but it does have some of that you know nice extra touch with, with small details here and there and since it's uh, MDF terrain it's very easy to put together and it's very easy to add your own details if you want so yeah, yeah. That's, that's nice yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what you guys are doing. And I hope also some of it will be on display now on this Saturday because we're going to have a little Gothenburg tournament. Uh, you and Mats are arranging Gothenburg uh, Dust Days 10. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, hopefully we can play on some of that terrain then, I hope. Yeah, I think so. I will bring it, but it's uh, not the complete set yet. No, so no, I will no, probably no. combine it with some other stuff as well. But uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, sure, and sure just speaking of MDF terrain, we've seen that you've been busy here a little bit, looking at some stuff that you've been doing. Yeah, well, right yeah, uh, I, I've, I've had a hectic uh, hobby uh, month, actually. I, I, I don't really know how I managed, and I, I, uh, not, not to be a, a whiny here, but I, my back, my head, and my neck is giving me plenty of um, examples of why I've been able to do all the things I've been doing, because I've had a crazy life at work. As, as uh, I went from... Like in one and a half month, I've gone from minus 30 hours in my comp bank to plus 25. So Ooh, then you right, know, right. My but in that time, I've been to the European Championship. I had a few friendly games. I've been uh, building some MDF. I've been painting some MDF. Uh, I've been redoing some MDF. I've been adding windows and stuff. I've been painting some frogs for uh, next tournament. Uh, and uh, well... I've been actually, and also uh, scribbling some in some notepads on other stuff, which I am not going to talk about here, but for other things that are working. And uh, I've been doing a few other stuff, uh, which we don't need to mention here, but it's hobby related and into this segment. Uh, so, yeah. And the thing I've been doing lately, the last thing here is this uh, Thor miniature, because I got the bottom floor of his beautiful uh, two by two uh, square houses yeah which those is, uh, skyscrapers those modular i have a few of those pieces myself they are fantastic yeah and now this um, uh, marikos uh, actually giving away some of those stuff uh, this uh, european champion for those who helped him pack and remove everything and carry the heavy stuff so i got myself uh, a second floor uh, so I'm now doodling, painting that. I've done some structuring, mixing uh, uh, PV, uh, wood PVA, uh, coloring, and some... Um, yeah, sort uh, of trying uh, out my recipe. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. with cool. the uh, spackle. What, what, what's it called again? Uh, uh, wall filler spackle. Wall filler, yeah, yeah wall filler spackle. So yes, yeah, so get this, this kind of texture and structure on the walls and uh, just make it less flat. Yeah, and I think it's coming along, and mm. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be great in the in the end result, but it's, I'm, I have so much thought about this building specifically, so I think it's going to be... Yeah, you hear me now. I'm I'm super excited about it. It's yeah, super fun. And I, uh-huh. I, I like you, you, you. I think you, you can see uh, when you look at a table that it's you who made it because it's always <laughs> those very bright and poppy colors. And yeah. I, I love that that you, you have a very distinct style. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. For for some reason, I've got the impression that Sverograd was white with red bricks. So I always try to make every house red bricks and white walls to have, so I can almost put everything together and it would be the same. Okay, I have one uh, uh, barn here or something, or a, uh, what, what, what do you call a storage house that is in green, which I was a little bit experimental yeah. when I was doing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think still it, it, it works, it blends in with the other ones. But um, yeah. Um, it, it works really well. And I also have to say that I like your theming of tables and it kind of works in nice tandem with my tables because yeah. I tend to go a lot more dark and yeah. gritty and sort of depressing. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well. so yeah, it's nice to have the variety between our tables. If every building was gray, it wouldn't look so nice when you have even if you have 10 beautiful gaming boards in a tournament so uh, hopefully mine can be that little different but i would like a happy neighborhood yeah yeah (laughs) and i I of course have the dream there that um that i will make um well i've talked about that a lot of times but you know making that special square for swear god weather fight in winter child novel Mm. uh so this building is actually probably going to be on that three mat table that my mind is still working on i have a few others uh, project that is in the hobby room but i would like to mention also that i was actually i was going up to my countryside the other weekend and uh, we have this deal me and my daughter that she always gets a, a, a newspaper so she can read through and on the newspaper a, a comic or a, a well a, a, some t- sort of paper that she reads and she does things in so i but i uh, gave one to myself as well and I, I, I took up the latest novel of a, a Swedish gaming table called Gaming Newspaper or uh, Gaming paper. Magazine yeah, yeah thank you My, I should shut up now but I'm not you know me <laughs> uh, so I got this Phoenix number and it's mostly role playing but in it also is a little bit 
about a special uh, game that your friend was doing on the Kickstarter, The Brain. Brains. Oh, right. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Swedish-based uh, zombie game. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, it's been a staple at uh, the Gothcon, tournament, uh, Gothcon uh, convention for a number of years. So uh, they had a very successful Kickstarter quite recently. That's mm. very cool to see. Yeah, and they had, in this uh, latest Phoenix, they had an article about how they build their houses. And for everyone who is building terrain to their uh, hobby table, uh, at least if you're in Swedish, because it's in Swedish, I don't think you want to <laughs> sit and translate it. It's not that good. But it's a, it's a very interesting and good uh, article to help you understand how can you do things easy but also very attractive when you're building a house uh, where you can find uh, wallpaper how you make doors turn with a simple little mechanique there and how you can make uh, interesting uh, roofs and stuff like that so uh, and I, I i think many people who play dust would do good at reading that article in the latest Phoenix. Yeah, so this um, is a, a shout out to Matthias, yeah. a good friend of mine, of ours, uh, who also plays a bit of Dust. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a while back when I borrowed some SSU and played SSU Army, most of that stuff was from his army. And I, I think mm. there were some some posts on the interwebs uh, on that. Yeah. I probably got some nice comments because he's a really good good artist he yeah. does a lot of cool stuff and also yeah like you said they are usually fairly simple but they look really well yeah. it works mm. so yeah it's and he, he built all of that terrain mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure uh, i wouldn't say yeah I, I think he built all of that terrain <laughs> you know that much better than me but i i know his name is in the article i think it's two guys who, who do that article together uh but uh, it's definitely worth checking out even though that it's uh it's a tabletop game and you don't move through squares and you move by inches and stuff like that or by ruler. Uh, it's still when you make terrain and why you make terrain. And yeah, yeah. So uh, really, really. Yeah. And I, I just that. love just uh, if, if you can just find pictures from those gaming tables because mm. they've done a lovely job. It's just uh, the typical uh, 80s small Swedish town. It, uh, yeah, it's it's <laughs> lovely terrain work. Yeah, because I like because he's. <laughs> That is also that's another ar- uh, argument you could, we could have probably for hours when you when you discuss what do you want when you play Dust. Uh, I know some people, and I know uh, Oli or us uh, when he designed the game, he wants this to be the epic uh, end game movie, uh, last uh, fifteen minutes of the movie when all hell breaks loose and all the cool stuff is happening. But I also like to just be a regular army that wanders into a small town that perhaps haven't seen the war and all of a sudden shit breaks loose over there and it's just... So it's like the first skirmish of a bigger battle. Yeah, Mm. and it's not perhaps we don't have to fight this time uh, at the VK deposit or the big Cthulhu church or the Mm. magical portal or whatever. I like the random uh, small town violence <laughs> or whatever you like to say yeah but I kind of feel the same I, I see where you come from here because uh, maybe you haven't really thought about it like that but for a long time now I have not built too many ruins I did a couple uh, also from Thor miniatures but uh, other than that I've built uh, like um, uh, complete buildings not ruined or destroyed or damaged in any way because I also felt I, I kind of got a bit fed up with that I saw you know almost all battlefield was a lot of ruins uh, and I don't know not the entire world can be a ruin no no yeah you have to be I believe one I mean people need to live somewhere yeah. you know so <laughs> You, you kind of did that as well, uh, Luda. You made that switch, but for different reasons a while back. Yeah, when I started, because my daughter, as you perhaps all, all know, but for those who are new to the pod, my daughter were complaining, why do you always do broken houses? Because uh, she, the dust houses are perfect to to toy with, with Lego figures and <laughs> certain of her other dolls she has. So uh, instead of her having to build all the Lego buildings up uh, when she wanted to play, it was easier for her to just 
pick some of the dust uh, <laughs> houses and play in them with the Lego figures and add some Lego uh, furniture and stuff like that. Uh, and at that point, I was like, okay, uh, let's do uh, let's do some with windows, with the, with the draping, some with the... Yeah, like windowsills and flowers. And yeah, yeah, and everything, <laughs> like bookshelves and some paintings on the walls and stuff like that, so she can play in them. Because it's also... It also makes it even more interesting when you put all your soldiers and it's okay it's just a game it's just a fun piece of well dice rolling game but still having the unit of well painted uh, soldiers inside that building and squaring off against others and you get that realism when you have the painting or the, the vase yeah, it's, yeah, or it's, it's, it's also extra story. little spiles that makes it uh, a bit more special and, and memorable hopefully so, definitely yeah, definitely. yeah. Um, um, uh, sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to do one little quick dicky because I think that could be a little fun thing and perhaps the listeners also can chip in on this because for one another reason I was talking to our good friend Lars for a few uh, a few days ago and we were discussing about uh, the uh, the amount of uh, points we had from different subs so I started counting mm. and okay this is not this is not an accurate count but as you know I am an SSU player by heart and this is my main uh, army and uh, it turns out I was way past 850 points for my US SSU when I uh, uh, lost track so to speak of counting and then just for the fun of it I started counting my Axis troops as well uh, because this is my less lesser army or say the third army for me and I was uh, way past 650 from my Axis so I just wondered you guys do you know how much po- and I don't know if my allies, but it must be over six fifty then. So I'm, and then it's the Mercs on yeah. top of that. I uh, actually have uh, an old spreadsheet. Oh, <laughs> you! So and I've lowballed everything. So if you can uh, run, uh, l- like say I, f- I have a kit that I can outfit in several different ways. Mm. I have always counted this as the cheapest option. Mm. So this is lowballing it, and I haven't updated this for about a year. <laughs> but but right I'm, now? I'm looking at it right now, and uh, uh, the count here is uh, 81 points of mythos. Ah, okay. That is definitely incorrect. Yeah, at this definitely. Point. You must <laughs> be having at least 300 now. Yeah. Uh, 84 points of mercs. That is also very much yeah, incorrect. Definitely. And then we come up to uh, SSU 577 points ah, at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, 837 for allies. <sighs> And 1,193 for access. I am not the worst. I'm not the worst. worst. You're (laughs) sicker than me. Yes. How beautiful. Uh, This is interesting. I have not counted mine, so uh, this will have to be a cliffhanger. I will have to go home and report next time. (laughs) I have no idea, actually. I have... Yeah, I have no idea how much mm. it is. I, I just uh, f- totally forgot about this spreadsheet that I actually had it until Luda just <laughs> mentioned it. So it's going to be interesting for me just going through and maybe do some updates here. Yeah, and I uh, urge all the listeners to send us their totals. What 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 is your worst? Uh, I mean, numbers here. <laughs> Show us your sickness, your perversions. <laughs> Um, and that's that I don't count uh, mm-hmm. even even the Japanese in this yet. So there's some <laughs> yeah, some there's more. Some more. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I also have to start painting the Japanese. That's uh, kind mm. of my next project. In uh, at, at least start painting. Yeah. But but I have some plans. Uh, that's kind of what I've been <laughs> doing mostly. I've been making plans for the last month. But I have done some hobbying. I've been experimenting with. Uh, I think a lot of people know that there's been a new uh, release of certain paints from a certain different company mm, and yeah. I've uh, yeah I've been experimenting a bit with those and mm. so far I am, it's promising mm. um, especially for two specific things uh, I'm talk- of course talking about the contrast paints mm. and uh, especially the skin tones and the black paint Mm-hmm. Because just trying to paint something to look like black mm-hmm. usually is yeah, it's, just horrible. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, especially if you're doing it like on big surfaces, trying to paint uh, uh, like a tank or water or yeah, something can be super that's, difficult. Smaller I'm not details. sure that the contrast paints are going to help there. They're not really made for big surfaces, I think. I haven't experimented with that yet. But for mm-hmm. small 
bits and just for skin tones, it's wonderful. And I've uh, I've shown some pics uh, uh, that I think Luda might have seen, but I don't no, think that yeah, but please pass them around, Magnus uh... had seen some of the experiments that I've done mm-hmm. so far. And yeah. Yeah, no, especially the skin tone, I would say, here on this picture looks really cool. And that's... That is this, is one this of the, is just uh, one layer of this Yeah, absolutely nothing else. Just primed and one rather thick layer of the contrast paints. Mm-hmm. And, and have a, an idea to try to make uh, those black ninja suits with these paints. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's going to be marvelous for that. Yeah, th- this is something that's really interesting when you talk about the skin tone there. Uh, I've been looking at a few different uh, paint pros on the internet and or YouTube, and uh, it seems like there's a. F- the, what I'm gathering is that it's a few of the paints that are extremely well. Mm. That is the the white, the black, and the grayish because you can make those. They are just so unbelievable, forgiving, and really going mm. into crevices. Of, uh, but one of the guys I'm, I, I, I like to listen to and watch sometimes is uh, Luke at Luke's APS. Uh, perhaps we can put some link under or something like that. Uh, it's just a so super cool dude. Uh, but uh, uh, and, and, and now I'm ranting, I know. But just the fact that he he quit his day job, which was being a music, musician, to have a more stable job than doing hobby things on, <laughs> on, on YouTube, YouTube. Mm-hmm. and that apparently <laughs> was better so uh, kudos to him but the thing is he talked about um, something that and I also had another guy I think it was a Swedish guy who was on it as well uh, who did some paintings that the 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 uh, the thing when you do only the uh, contrast paints to be quick uh, it's very easy to mess up between areas. So that you is have true. to be a very good painter, actually. And it's not a beginner's paint, as I was saying before, because you have to be very clear and crisp between areas. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you f- personally, you just, it goes to shits. Uh, that uh, is very true. Uh, uh, and so. then, and he had a big argument for, like, you had to use, that's why you should. If you're a beginner, it's better to use different washes because they cover up your mistake. Mm-hmm. When the Nunian oil, which is such a super color, it really goes in. And if you messed some things up, it it melts away in that black uh, shadow thing mm-hmm. in the middle. Uh, so I'm... I'm well, I'm I'm, bet, I'm definitely going to buy some of those special three or four colors that they say are... Yeah. And as, as, with, as with all hobby supplies, mm-hmm. this is a tool it's uh, something that you have to learn how to use in an effective way yeah. uh, it's not a, a magic item that you just dip your minacy and and then they come out perfect so you just have to learn how to use them and since they're so new new uh, we the use case haven't really solidified yet but they definitely are promising i think yeah that's interesting yeah, yeah, definitely. They they have a niche, and uh, it's very good that they do this and they push the line forward and they evolve the paints. That's uh, very, very good. So let's talk about some dust news. Uh, there's a big sale going on at the uh, Hong Kong store, the worldwide store, basically. Uh, they are moving their factory, their... Uh, Uh, what they call the monastery (laughs) and uh, at the moment they are also having a big premium moving sale so that's basically all of the old uh, stock of uh, Cerberus and Sferograd pattern premiums and it's a pretty big sale for some of these units so if you're looking for uh, it's not only older units as well there's some newer uh, but if you want that specific uh, patterns. I think some of the newest I've seen are uh, the Dust Scorpion trucks, for for example, in the Sverograd mm. uh, and Cerberus patterns. So that's a, a good way. And if you want to just have that for um, using in your desert army, but just for variation, that could be a, an option. Yeah, that's mm, yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's uh, always nice when someone paints for you if you can afford it. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> of course. Sorry if I'm breaking it up now, but I'd just like to give a shout out also then to this uh, Swede that's called Emil Nyström. Ah. Uh, he's uh, one of those that I've been watching also with the contrast paints. So uh, if you Google contrast paints and Emil, I think uh, you can uh, have some nice thing with the um, 
Ah, uh, with the contrast paints there. Sorry, Very sorry. Cool. Just all right. So let's go into mm. some of the releases. And the first uh, big release for this month is something that I think, especially of us here, that Luda has been really anticipating <laughs> with just all of your heart. I, I uh, believe yeah. um. this is. Rosie and crew available in premium and model kit resin versions. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Uh, that that's we are on the verge of ordering. I think a few of these, uh, a few of us from uh, Poland because Mark didn't had them before. Unfortunately, the means a mix up. I think with the orders or something. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of stuff got caught in in yeah. uh, the customs. Because <laughs> I, I believe if if we had fifty of these or hundred of these when at the European Championship, I think he would have none when the championship was over. <laughs> uh, everyone was on him. Uh, Don't you have those rosy crew? And, uh, just, I felt bad for him. Uh, I mean, Marek for uh, a little bit there because he was like fending off people right and left when they... Not yeah. just me. Mm-hmm. So th- this is a very interesting box. It's uh, it's uh, branded as a collector's edition, and, I, and mm. I think that's because it's a resin kit. Mm. So probably there are going to be a plastic version of this uh, at a later date. Yeah, I think that's what they said sometime yeah. earlier. Yeah. So this box is uh, the new standing model for Rosie, uh, the Soldier 1 version. And there are four of her crew, the Rosie's uh, mechanic girls. Uh, Four points for these chicks. They are unique. uh, So you can only have one, even if you get more. So that's uh, a drawback. But if you look at their their abilities, I would say that's um, probably a good thing. Um, They are armed with Thompson submachine guns. That's pretty good armaments, actually. Um, Quite... Um, not that extremely powerful, but uh, right in the middle. But I think the big thing here is the range four mm-hmm. for these. The, yeah. That's a really, really good way because it matches well with uh, Rose's bazooka. Yeah. And uh, just, uh, of course, their skills. First off, the, the Rose's crew skill uh, itself. When joined, when jo- Rosie is joined to her crew... Rosie re-rolls all failed dice when she performs a makeshift repair special action. Mm-hmm. So yeah. just mm-hmm. that in and of itself yeah. is definitely worth it. But I think more interesting is their other <laughs> skill, ammo supply. Once mm-hmm. per game, perform an ammo supply special action to resupply all limited ammo weapons for friendly ground units. You can build an entire army around this skill, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very powerful skill. So, uh, of course, it's a once per game. But still, uh, when you build an army, at least for me, that's always part of the decision that you don't want too many of these limited because even if you have a really big, like maybe first or possibly second turn, after that, you are kind of stranded. What mm-hmm. you're going to do, you only have a bunch of machine guns or something like that. But with these girls, you can just reload and then have at it again. Yeah. So, yeah, that's And that's what's really interesting cool. for uh, for me, I think, uh, is that even... Of course, these are Soldier 1, uh, but still, this is going to make the Allied Rangers very, very happy because they have a lot of limited ammo weapons. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly my thought as well. Mm-hmm. It's a very good uh, value to the Ranger. So player. it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, what these girls can do for, for the game, definitely. The, the only drawback with it, if it's any, that it's, it's one, it gets... This will get almost like we had for a while when everyone was playing Emma, uh, or something like that. Is not the, uh, not every Allied player, but well, everyone, because Emma was so super good before the um, cheat death was changed. Uh, but so I, you, you you kind of perhaps gonna see this in every Allied army, and I I, I understand it. You want it in your army. I will want to play it every single time, but but when it gets so very attractive uh, i think it it could have it could almost have been with for eight points this unit just so you don't have it every single time that you really yeah. consider it but we'll uh, we'll, ha- we'll have to see how that shakes out because yeah this looks extremely ex- exciting and interesting at the moment but yeah. uh, we'll see if it actually works out uh, in yeah, because end. even if you don't use the skills, I mean, 10 points for uh, a squad of five persons who have four Thompsons, uh, one bazooka, five wrenches, and, and that's just a 
heck of a crew. Uh, absolutely. And if you're only interested in the ammo supply skill, you can just run the Rosie's crew by itself. You don't mm, need Rosie. No, no, definitely. So that's another one. That's mm-hmm. actually a small correction there, Loda. Uh, in, the, in the unit, there are four girls, but only two of them have wrenches. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, of course. Uh, so in total, good. with Rosie, you would yeah. get three wrenches okay, between yeah. them. So. So, so they don't, they don't wreck. Uh, otherwise, they would take out almost a big Cthulhu monster or a d- Type 7 tank or something like that in, a, yeah, in one I mean, go. Yeah, you, sh- you shouldn't I mean, really underestimate uh, those attacks that do two damage against any vehicle. No, That's, no uh, definitely. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, and the th- but the thing is also that this is really a crew I would use to take out Greg. I would take out Winterchild. I would take out uh, uh, Sergeant Victory but without even looking at him uh, because you know... I have felt it was very, very simple to take out, win- at least not Winter Child, but, but uh, Sonic Victory, even before the cha- cheat death skill was changed, when you put Rosie in whatever allied crew you got him. Uh, but this is like, because they have all, they have all sh- they can shoot at him, uh, even no matter who you uh, go for. And then you have these all these close combat attacks, and you got lives, and you got the ex- expert in close combat. They... they <laughs> I, 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 these will really be the ones that I would put in harm's way when something bad or big comes my way, uh, and they will probably suffer for it. But 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 they will also but most likely even even if you roll poorly and they mm. don't do as much, it's just ten points. Mm. So true, so true. Uh, three points, or is it two points better than Sergeant Victory, for instance? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, and, and a hell of a lot of more points than uh, less point than the Winter Child and yeah. stuff like that. So I mean. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah. Second release, uh, Panzermeister in model kit form. So not much more to say that if you don't want the premium or you want the uh, the prime version, you can now get it as a model kit. Hmm. Um, I still haven't got uh, one myself, but I'm really hoping that I have the opportunity to play with it because it's a, it's a lovely model and I love the skills. And just try and experiment and put him in different vehicles and see how he does. And please enlighten me. Is it only in the model kit where you get three heads? I think it's in all of the versions okay. you get the mm. three different heads so you can uh, experiment uh, yeah. with different versions of him. There. I, I hope so. But but those the other two heads you don't use for the Meister, those would look super on your uh, sergeants in, the, in a squad or something Absolutely. like that. Just to upgrade. So uh, yeah, And you also get two different arms for him, right? Oh yeah, that's uh, uh, because possible, in the, yeah. at least in, uh, in the pictures he's holding either holding uh, his yeah. uh, pistol or he's just pointing, pointing yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's so true, so true. That is actually mm. an interesting point. Uh, I haven't actually thought about that, but that is uh, yeah, it's, it so, says yeah. actually on the on the box itself, supplied with arm and head options. So. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. So you have you have some choices there. Yeah, really. So I, I absolutely mm. love that we get. Multiple options, not only for the walkers, but also for the heroes. Now, that's yeah. uh, I, I hope to see more of this just to get more variety for the armies mm-hmm. in the game, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So you can personalize it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the final new release for this month is the Super Pershing 2. This is a premium dustified model, and uh, uh, we also got confirmation that there will be a uh, conversion kit for this uh, at a later date. Mm. Um, this is an interesting kit, I would say. <laughs> Uh, at first glance, uh, it looks really cool. I mean, the look of this model is absolutely fantastic with oh, this yeah. enormous, big, long honking phaser uh, gun. Um, <clears throat> the stats the are decent, I would say. Uh, move to March 5, uh, vehicle 5, 7 hit points, so pretty basic there. Uh, it's tracked, it's a large vehicle, it's unique, because uh, historically there they only were one Super Pershing in the European theater. And um, it has a very similar stat line uh, to the Bulldog, uh, but instead of having uh, two six for its facers, it has one seven. Uh, the big thing here with this is that it's 23 points, which seems... A bit much. Oh yeah, uh, there's a reason why this says unique. It's because it will be unique if you ever see it on a battlefield. Uh, no, but it looks okay. Um, I get it. People like probably me who are gonna probably buy this no matter what because we want it so fucking awesome. Uh, we we it doesn't matter the stats 
we're gonna play it anyhow. Uh, but uh, oof, I I don't know, uh, Magnus, if you want to come in and tear this piece to pieces, or sh- I should do it. <laughs> um, I don't know who, who's gonna be the uh, villain yeah, here. I don't know um, because because it's 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 shit. It's basically shit. <laughs> no. That's what it is. I it's, wouldn't say I no, wouldn't go I, so far. I, but I, no, no. But I, I've already said it's one of the best units. Uh, the model wise, the visual thing of it is one of the best they've done for ages. But I mean, just the fact of it that we discussed before. I'm sorry, I'm on a rant here. I'm, I'm gonna quiet up very soon and let Magnus do the concrete stuff. Uh, but like, it has one seven. It can't destroy a seven vehicle, the Russian tank that has eight life, even if the guy rolls poorly. You know, if you have a Russian tank, you just run it straight up onto this Pershing, and you know, it doesn't matter because I'm going to take him out. I, I I I want to be afraid when I see this with my Russian tanks, but if I see this, I just roll my Russian tanks right up to it and blow it away eventually. This won't take out my Russian tanks. And if it had at least had the possibility to eradicate my Russian tanks with a hit, uh, so I could at least be... Have Sorry. <laughs> no worries. There's one ping and one ping only, Captain. Uh, we are d- into the deep here. I know I'm into the deep end, so it was so good that that ping just came there. Uh, we are having sonar contact, Captain. Uh, well, hey, well, yeah, you hear me. I'm taking water over my head. Magnus, please take this one home. No, yeah, I, it, it looks so super cool. So uh, I'm also sad that it's 23 points. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy that they didn't, you know, put like ten points on it because that would be crazy. Yeah, th- this unit uh, does not replace anything else in the game at the no, moment. No, and I'm I'm fine with that, but it, because it's supposed to be a very special unit, so I'm fine with it being, you know, on the expensive side. But twenty three points for this guy is is just way too much. Um, you compared it to Bulldog, which is a fair comparison. Personally, I compare it to Cobra. And just just hopping in here, and uh, just to be a really pissant, <laughs> I mean, the Cobra, for all the listeners out there, that's that legendary M4 Walker you perhaps heard about that no one is playing nowhere in the entire world because it's so badly priced. So just so you know what Magnus is talking about, it's that legendary... M4 Walker yeah, and the, with the, the face Yeah, the, the Cobra, it's, uh, I think it's 17 points, right? Yeah. Uh, 17 points which too is, much. <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit too much for it. Uh, but this one is, of, is, of course, it's it's better than a Cobra, uh, obviously, it, it, in, it, in several ways. Yeah. But it's not that much better. So let's say the Cobra should be about 15, 16 points at something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly, but... Maybe this one should be like maybe 19 points or so, but now it's 23, which is, it's just too much. And uh, it's sad because so, it's, I think it's so close to being good. Yeah, so so f- I can, uh, I really only see this in uh, some sort of like uh, like casual games, of course, some special scenarios, or if you really want to, to use it because it's cool. Uh, I can't really see this mm. being used in any type of uh, of tournament play or competitive play at all. Yeah, and that's a good point. Uh, when you say that it's a, it's a bad unit, mm. I don't think it's a bad unit. It's an overcosted unit, and oh, it's yeah, not yeah. a competitive unit to use in tournament play. No, 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 no. That's a very very important difference. I think. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So. And they know we're ranting a little bit because we had such so much high hopes for this, uh, and this is just giving me. Uh, uh, some bad vibes uh, to the upcoming uh, croc with the phaser gun, which we hope to see any day now. No, probably a year <laughs> or two after this. And after this, this rant, perhaps we never see it. But <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, please don't make the same mistake with the crocodile when it comes. Uh, yeah, because I even if play it, this, yeah, if uh, like I said, if this was nineteen points, for example, mm. uh, it would probably see a bunch of competitive play. So yeah. I would be completely okay with it being like 20 or maybe 21 mm-hmm. because then it, it would be like on the more expensive end, it would still see some play here and there. 
But now when it's 23, it will just be discarded for, for other more points efficient stuff, basically. So it's a, it's a bit saddening because it's such a cool model and such a cool concept. Mm-hmm. So. And I think people are going to use it uh, anyway just because of that fact, but I don't see it showing up very often. No, because we were talking about it before also that, we, okay, yeah, you can put uh, Greg and Issa in it and you can pay, put Tito behind it. But, and then, of course, it's going to be a little bit it's going to be dangerous then, but still... Uh, That's even more points, and you can do that with another unit. Yeah, and, the, and do that with the Bulldog then. And mm. you. And besides, also, but because that was the real breaking point why the Bulldog now is such a really good walker, because they turned it to a Type 6, and that made it harder to kill. Uh, this one... And it's got uh, smoke launchers. Yeah, that's also a very good point. And it's got yeah two six instead of one something. Yeah, so. but but even though but the fact is, if this one had could have had nine lives or something, that two grenade launchers couldn't take it, or that my Russian tank couldn't wipe it out in an instant. For some reason, this could just be. It could be a Type 5, it could have a weak phaser, but if it could stay on the field, because I can't risk put uh, Greg in this one, because then he will die if I'm mm. that competitive. I can do it just for shits and giggles, but then I, I will put my Greg in my command in my truck instead, because it's so much more fun to have Greg and Izzy in a Desert Scorpion truck or something like that, when when, when opponent really, you know, baffles when that start rolling um, or something more fun, you know. Uh, and I, 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 no, no, I'm sorry because this can't. And perhaps, and please at least do this then to give this a platoon or something that so, so it could boost itself because that also the bulldog has that stimulation possibility from the uh, platoon. So the gap is too wide. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There also been sort of a little leak uh, of an upcoming uh, unit because uh, yeah. a user on uh, Board Game Geek uh, oh. ordered an Axis Luftwaffe army box, opened it up, and uh, discovered that uh, there had been a mispack in his army box, ah. and uh, he got uh, a completely new unit card included for a unit that hasn't been released yet. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, this unit is the Jagdhund. Uh, this is a scout car, basically, or a little armored car for uh, Axis block. It's seven points, uh, and it has a uh, heavy machine gun uh, in the turret and an X-7 missile <laughs> launcher. Yeah, this cool. is really, really cool looking. <laughs> yep. yep. And uh, just... A harassment unit for for seven points. I could see fielding like two of these and going around and hunting uh, like Desert Scorpion trucks with this. So this is a really cool looking little scout car. Yeah, and the reason I made that groaning sound was because I thought you were going to uh, discuss that new leak from Paolo himself on Facebook. Uh, I Paolo guess... always leaks here and there. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's one for you now. No, I would never go that far. He is... Uh, okay, sorry. Let, let's focus here and go for that beautiful, beautiful picture that was released here a few uh, days ago. Oh, no, just yesterday, actually, uh, at 10.31 Swedish time. Uh, <laughs> it's that beautiful picture that I've been waiting for so, so long. It's the ambush at the Dry Creek, of oh. course. <laughs> with not only do we see the new... Uh, frog hero with the face of batons but we see his squad behind him and we see the new type uh, version I think of the new uh, KV-47 the KV KV, I'm sorry not yeah yeah, KV-47 that is rumored to be coming in the background there. No, you're, you're, so, the Type 47. Yeah, Type 47. Mean, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Not KB, Type 47. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, sort of yeah. variant of the Matryoshka and Babushka walkers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, if you, you you can really go bonkers because in this picture, you, always, you see all those wonderful Fessis guys with all the explosives. <laughs> yes. And that little machine gun truck is in the behind. And I'm extremely interested in 
the wall segments that's in there as well. <laughs> is this a new terrain feature we are going to see? Is that a boat or something? Is that, what is that? Because it, it, it perhaps it's just a wall, perhaps it's just a, a bridge they've made, but it just, I, I'm, I get so curious about what could that be. But the hero, the big Chinese wonderful hero with his big batons coming at them. Oh, yes, baby. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I... oh. Yeah, this it's a really cool picture. And what, what I specifically like about it is that it, like you say, it shows a, a different type of scenario than we've seen a lot from the studio uh, up until now, where it's been very much focused on the Babylon desert. This is... Um, bit more greenery in the background it's uh, more of a wilderness type uh, terrain and uh, it, it's it looks really really cool short just yes, short and sweet yeah definitely a big shout out to the guy who's making these scenario pictures uh, they are really really sweet and uh, you uh, yeah well yeah I, th- I think from what I've heard it's uh, not everyone, but I think Paolo is uh, involved himself in taking a lot of these. And I heard t- tales of him going around with uh, like, a, a, like a little blower and blowing dust on stuff. Mm. And just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. I, I can just see that image. <laughs> well, they do it beautifully. Yeah. Uh, um, and this one I could have easily framed and have on my wall in my living room, actually. It's so I'm sorry, but, but I've been waiting for these frogs now since... Uh, well, it's two, three years. We heard the rumor of them the first mm-hmm. time, or something like that. And we it was one and a half year when we saw the first concept sketch. I think it was like, so this is fine. Uh, now that they've shown them painted up and ready to go, we know they will arrive very, very shortly. And yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm just taking a moment here. Yeah. <sighs> All right, that was a fine moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glad we could share it with you. All right, let's go to our mail call section. We have a lot of interesting questions from our listeners. First up, we got a question from Johnny Grogan who asked, Can I be a guest on the show sometime? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, definitely, Johnny, you know it. Uh, you have a, a bed at my place any day of the time of the week. And you know also that you're always present when I'm on the show, at least, because uh, uh, it's just that simple. Uh, actually, just want to um, uh, give you a little shout out also, uh, Johnny, because uh, I, I've made some wrong installations with my messenger uh, these last couple of days I had some upgrades so i actually didn't see you had texted me i'm ashamed about that but uh, we have now i think reddit that one because you wanted us to talk a little about a new terrain that was coming out and i think you meant magnus and uh, rsl gaming's terrain yeah. so hopefully you will uh, have that answer now in in, in the podcast and yeah. not by a message from me but also to be a bit more specific we have been discussing some way to get uh, our listeners more involved directly in the show in in some way we haven't really crystallized exactly what that will entail uh, how it would work uh, stuff like that but uh, there are there are some ideas so uh, for you johnny we're putting you on the list (laughs) definitely Next up, we got uh, a question from uh, Greg Wablow, the <laughs> big <laughs> uh, ch- chief over there in the US. What is your favorite official scenario since the launch of the official campaign? And um, I'm, I'm sure it's the, uh, if you haven't checked this out, the Lost Paradise Lost campaign, it's it's just incredible. If mm-hmm. you go over to Dust, the Dust USA uh, website and sign up for the newsletter there and you get the stories you get the new scenarios and just the stories by themselves it worth signing up to the newsletter for i feel um but what do you guys feel have you any specific favorites from the uh, uh unfortunately scenarios? i haven't really played uh, too many of these uh, newer scenarios I played a few of the uh, of the last sort of campaign which is I don't know exactly the it, it's more or less the same type where you can play games and report in and I distinctly remember the uh, the goat chase yeah. fantastic scenario yeah uh, I'm not sure if that is what he means or if it just uh, uh, asks about the last scenarios for Paradise Lost uh, which I I don't I'm not sure if I played 
any of them actually. Well, uh, on the top of my head, I can't think of any one of the specific. But immediately when I read this question, go chase. Mm. <laughs> I, I have one specific that popped into my mind. That's the catacombs and tentacles scenario. Mm. This is a, for those who haven't seen this. This is a, a bit of a throwback to the Operation Sverograd scenarios. You're going into an underground labyrinth and trying to find specific objectives. The twist here is that uh, first off, there's uh, some locked doors in front of the objectives that you have to open up with a successful roll of a die. And then when you try to claim the objective, then a Cthulhu monster appears and protects it. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, it's just all of these scenarios for the, the campaign are all very different and they all have these specific types of weird rules and specific situations that apply. And this is one that really stuck out to me, I, th I feel. Yeah, yeah that's, definitely. That's really cool. They are all great scenarios, and uh, I'm gonna confess that that's actually, I if I haven't played them all. I haven't played the ones I have played near as many times as I wanted. Uh, it's of course in the end it's down to my own fault. Uh, these are so good, all the scenarios that. I'm f actually really irritated and frustrated that we haven't played them more. I would love for somebody in Sweden to do a, a tournament with only these scenarios. I would be, I don't know how it would work out, but you should be able to do a, something like a 100 point tournament and use these scenarios. I would be super happy if that were happening. I know if no one does it, you have to do it yourself. So yeah, I give that almost to myself. And perhaps I will get my thumb out of my arse and do this. Uh, we'll see how, because uh, not all of them work with all units. But uh, like this, like this one, for instance, no, no. you can't really use aircraft in an underground labyrinth. I think that one doesn't say only infantry. Uh, it could be yeah, actually. I think so. And, and so there's also there's some but... asymmetrical scenarios. You have one where you, yeah, yeah, one of, of the players yeah. are trying to break through with as many vehicle sevens as possible, yeah. while the other player trying to destroy them. And so it's a it's a tough way to to kind of adapt and use this. But the idea itself is very very interesting if you can make it work. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I mean I don't know why also, but I feel like for some reason uh, the people that. I'm playing with when I'm playing mostly don't want to play them or it doesn't uh, suggest them for some reason. I don't know why this is, why we don't play these because they all are great scenarios. You should yeah. play them yeah. more often. Uh, so it's great that Greg uh, highlights this uh, with the question because everyone out there start playing these scenarios if you don't, haven't Definitely. done it already because they are super good and uh, they should be played more and uh, Everyone right, so, so between us here today, let's make a deal that uh, this summer we should play at least a couple of these to, yeah, to, to, to try them out. Definitely. That's uh, a really, really good idea. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Troy Tepes. If you shoot two lasers at each other at the same time, will they bounce off each other? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you think, uh, well, <laughs> physics wise, lasers are just light, so I think they just pass through. But maybe if you, if they are synchronized wavelengths and you shoot them exactly, maybe the wavelengths cancel each other out. And you know, yeah, it's the wave particle theory yeah. stuff there. So yeah, <laughs> you, uh, maybe. You know, Troy, I think you and a mate get one laser rifle yeah, and try. each and try it yeah. let's see I'm sure make a practical uh, yeah. you practical too, experiment okay. dust busters <laughs> <laughs> no seriously Troy is a nice a wonderful fella uh, at least what I get that impression from Facebook so don't shoot lasers on, on yourself with other guys please Troy uh, keep them keep up Keep firing on the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a trio of questions from Mateusz Kuczynski. Mm. Uh, first off, we have a, a follow-up, basically. Mm. We've yeah. already mentioned some here. What are your opinions on the upcoming Red Guard starter box? Kowalski with his Marauders and the new version of Babushka, Babushka Matroshka. Uh, yeah, th this is... An, um, if this actually is the starter box for the st Steel Guard... Um, <laughs> It's going to be one of the coolest starter boxes available, I think. Uh, yeah. I, um, I don't oh, know. No, no, no. Uh, do we actually know that this will be one hero and uh, unit and 
babushka or matryoshka. It, it seems because big. that that starter is going to be super expensive points wise. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, going to well, be like twice the points of any other or something like that. And yeah, and just uh, if you ex- if you just look at the the amount of. Uh, health points or hit points you get in that compared mm-hmm. to a lot of the others. I'm I'm not sure if you actually get the yeah, we'll have, we'll have I to can, see, I but can see, but I re- can see regardless, the hero and, but yeah. Regardless, I mean, new stuff is always cool, and uh, like we said before, these uh, these steel guard steel guards are cool, and now they come in, in close combat uh, mm-hmm. style, which is something new. We haven't seen that before. Uh, that's a new, completely new tool for them, and 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 completely new like way of of playing them. So that's yeah, I, I would, think it's going to be I nice. I would fear these guys showing up in a transport helicopter. Just no, but they can't. They can't. Well, yeah, yeah, well you can. You can have the squad, but it's uh, too many if you put the hero. Yeah, if you put the hero in it, no. but if you put a squad of these guys in a hel- in a helicopter, or even better, in the invader. Then but you why? get why? Because then you can charge anything on the board turn one, yeah. basically. And you stun that, which you could do with you have a yeah, decent sure. size of Tesla or you have the Grom or something. Yeah, well, because they won't, uh, well, I don't know because I haven't seen the stats on the, these Tesla clubs, but if you go by what the others, what the Tesla does for damage, which is almost nothing all the time you, you you they can't do anything else than go f- to one particular unit and say okay you're stunned stay still and then well, the they thing get is it's, an, it's an almost with with uh, three guys you get mm-hmm. three dice mm-hmm. and you get an almost guaranteed stun yeah, which is a, which but, is but a difference with but, if you use the uh, the other uh, there are three guys and there are steel guards the cheapest three guys steel guards are 13 points the expense, most expensive one is like 1920 or something like that. Mm. so say just by approximation these will be 15 14 points something just just taking the number out of the thin air you don't pay 14 points for something just to hop onto the board and stun something and then die because that's oh, what that, they will do. That would be a very expensive stun marker. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. And uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see yeah. when we know the exact details of it, of course. Of course. course. But uh, I think, like I said, it's a new cool tool for anyone playing Steel Guards. And even though I don't really play SSU, I've said it before, when I, when I really commit and start doing an SSU army, they will contain Steel Guards for sure. Uh, they are my by far my favorite SSU models. Uh, so yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And these units is one of those that I don't really care what stats they will have. I've already said that I would buy at least two, three units and the hero because I just feel the just the real well the the, the concept. The, yeah. yeah, the concept. Everything is just so. Uh, it's just uh, it's just passion, you know. <laughs> it's, that's what. And I definitely hope that they will bring the babushka matryoshka into this pack because those are badly needed in print now and you, you want to because the guards as we discussed on the internet or at least on facebook uh, a bit is they don't have any vehicles if they don't to take the block so they only have the uh, the the babushka and the matryoshka and okay they have the other one there the the tank hunting stuff KV one five two or something, which has no machine guns. Uh, yeah, it's cheap like hell, but it it's super useless. It's a so. good it's a good tank hunter, but yeah, that's yeah. that's all it does. It yeah, can't yeah. really do anything else. No. So so you don't want it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's a, mm, so no. yeah. I could also see a few more uh, steel guard vehicles. Not too many, but like a couple more, so they have yeah. a little bit more to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next question from Matthias is, uh, what heroes, in your opinion, should get a second version? I would love to see the alternate sculpt of Frank von Stein being re-released. That's Frank 2. Mm-hmm. And to see Nikolai 2 as well, as he is an AKWD officer, so he could have a more infantry-focused version. Uh, I would say a, a hero that is ripe for re-release, I would say, is Bazooka Joe. I would say all of them. Yeah, a lot of the older yeah. ones, especially yeah. the uh, 
especially the the first wave, the old FFG models and stuff like that. But especially if you go in what's happening in the story, mm-hmm. you could definitely see a new version oh, of yeah. Bazooka Joe yes. with a completely yeah, new sure. skill set. Yeah, for sure. That's true as well. That's true as well. Uh, although I think the Black Ops, I think he should be, perhaps that should be remodeled. But I still feel that that the four dice is something that really should be with him in his new role. Absolutely. Uh, trying to not to spoil too much for those who don't know. <laughs> so, but um, but that's uh, yeah, and perhaps, but but that's that then it's that's really a deal breaker. Then should he? Should they go the character in himself uh, to to to, to, get, to give him the opportunity to lose, but so Joe just being <laughs> Joe now, or is that too much of an alternation with his character? Because mm-hmm. as everyone knows, n- n- even if you're just starting with the game, Basuka Joe never has used a bazooka. Mm-hmm. That was just a PR stunt that he did for. Uh, the um, the Bond uh, collection in the U.S. He was posing with a bazooka or mm. something like that. I, I don't know ex- exactly the specific of it. So he, he Basoka Joe always hates the fact that he, they call him Basoka <laughs> Joe because he's not Basoka. Uh, but uh, that's a fun thing. Yeah. But especially with this new role now, it it should be about time that he loses the Basoka <laughs> part. I think. And just but becomes <laughs> G.I. Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. That's for them yeah, to... Yeah, but a few uh, of the old ones, that kind of feels like a natural step if you want to release second versions of, uh, uh, of Heroes. You can... Well, maybe you could skip uh, Sigrid because you already have a couple of versions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you could do Bazooka Joe, of course, and you can do Lara, maybe. You could do, um, uh, what's his name? Rhino was very early as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they have said, the, the studio, that they have some plans to redesign, especially the heavy infantry for the Allied. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, those heroes are going to get some kind of remodel that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, uh, and I would actually just... like to see uh, uh, maybe, yeah, like not a second version of Totenmeister, but like another Totenmeister. So you could play two with have, let, they should of course have completely different skills, do completely different stuff, but well, yeah. But since they made that correction, uh, or which I thought was sad, because the, okay, spoiler alert, the original Totenmeisterin died. So they, there's now multiple Totemisters. So you should actually be able to use, at least if I understand correctly, several Totemisters no. in a unit, in an army. Uh, so perhaps you should... Well, no, because she's a hero. That's but the she only isn't r- a hero. It's a male now. They have changed that. Because the girl... Undead is dead. They have replaced I, her. I see what you mean. Story, so, story, story wise, wise, there are yeah, yeah. multiples, but yeah. the, she's still, uh, or he is still a hero in the game. Yeah. So yeah, it, it yeah, could but, it could be some kind of special if you re- release a new version, a new scout yeah. that is still a hero technically, mm-hmm. but is a non unique hero. That could be a possibility. Yeah, that could be also be very fun mm-hmm. if you could have one hero. Or at least two or three of them. It, perhaps they will have to have some multiplying costs. That if you have one, it's one point cost. The second one is double the point cost or something like that. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's just. Uh, and I was cool with it being the Totten Meisterin because I was think it was good that the the Bloitkreutz are run almost by the two. Uh, e- most evil persons in the world, and they're both female. And one <laughs> one is alive, one is dead. And but they complement each other very nicely, so they have all the spectra there. Uh, I don't know what that says about me, but <laughs> you know, no, but it's just like I mean, it, I think it's cool. Uh, I, I I love the secret uh, model. I would uh, uh, I would I would polish her shoes every day of the week, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, Final question from Matthäus, uh, also SSU uh, related. What are your guides for Spetsnaz? I plan to expand my SSU in this direction. I'm curious of your opinions. Um, I don't think 
any of us really play Spetsnaz that much, but we do have some experience playing against Spetsnaz because we have one of our fellow Vikings who really like to use them. Uh, yeah, he yeah. uses them very efficiently as well. Definitely. And, uh, well, I, I was playing Spetsnaz in the beginning of the Spetsnaz army, and I would have loved to play it more, but it got to a point when they got perhaps a little bit too competitive and uh, I played them so much for a while that I was like I needed a, a break for it uh, and they are yeah two people that, uh, that really knows how to use or oh, three people I know how to use it's Essas uh, but I also think Martin really has learned how to play Spetsnaz and but also we have the champion of the European Championship mm. uh, who just uh, mm. switched because it was not fun anymore to win with the Luft uh, um, the Fallschirmjäger. So now this year he won with the uh, Spetsnaz instead. Uh, <laughs> you, you should take a look at his army, of course, if you. If, but um, that that's also that depends because Spetsnaz has so much options. Um, they are the obvious things. You got to go with the Iron Joe, and you could, but you can split him up. But should you have Iron Joe with the command squad? Should you have the command vehicle? Is it too much to have the command vehicle? How many invaders or do you want to have in your army? Reliana. Yeah. Should you not have invaders at all? Should you go without choppers? Because the really th- fun part to me with the Spetsnaz army and Iron Joe is actually that you re activate the walkers and they are easy to reactivate so you can do that very unexpected uh, play when you you charge with your walkers and people think you're done with them but all of a sudden nina is eight squares in and for, oh, seven in and firing uh three squares or uh that anatoly can shoot twice and stun two different objects in the same turn mm. and then your spetsnaz just creeps up and it doesn't matter if you have 2000 heroes in your army or not because those spetsnaz when they can't defend and can't do anything uh, they when the opponent can't do anything i mean those spetsnaz will take care of you anyway so it, it's um, yeah, there are several things to to consider um one of them i think is like if you are going to play one of the platoons or not uh, how heavily are you going into Spetsnaz? Is, is it going to be like a 100% Spetsnaz or do, do you want to do some kind of mix? Uh, for me, since I really don't know too much, I've only like played against them. Uh, but if I were to build the Spetsnaz army, I know one thing I would include, and that is the Butcher. Because that is a really cool model, and it really stands out. And it's a it's a really good hero. It's a hero that I consistently kind of value too low when I face it. I wouldn't really know too much about that, but I know he looks cool, and he looks very different from every other hero. So you oh, immediately yeah. can like spot him on the table, which is cool. Which is something that it's yeah, it makes him very special. So that that's what I would kind of start out if I were doing a Spetsnaz army. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is true. And I think the the uh, the thing that I always have problems with when it comes to Spetsnaz is that uh, they have a lot of flamethrowers and they have a lot of assault rifles as their main weapon with their infantry which has a, a range of 4. Yeah. Which is really annoying if you're running <laughs> like I usually do infantry that only has a range of three for yeah. their men weapons which means that i have to move in move and fire they can just stand still and do sustained fire on me which is uh, yeah which is kind of also why the the platoon when they get at the double is, is so powerful because they can really you know rush into the battlefield be in good positions and then sort of play the waiting game let yeah. the enemy come to them because they have so so good positions right from the start yeah and they have so good spread of uh, attacks that you can rush in half of your army and let the opponents kill you because if you have the rest of the army then in position just be, be at the right places and you can start the next turn by just executing the other guy's army it's super powerful, uh, and that that, but it, and that's a wonderful little um, platoon they got there with the at the double. I think it's very Spetsnaz-ish, but that also makes it 
hard to motivate why you should have the new PT-47s and Spetsnaz. Because I would actually see a Spetsnaz army coming in the PT-47s. That would be their standard transport, I would say. Maybe if we go to gridless or you go to bigger gridded mats, that could be an option because then you might really need that speed boost. That that could be so because uh, since on the smaller mats, as you say, they, they, they with this enormous charge in the first turn, they they get where they want to go and then they have don't have... Because I always see the Spetsnaz as fast, sneaky, going into the objectives and then of course, if it's too long a grind match, they will eventually fail. But as long as they can end the game in a quick match, they are super powerful. So uh, um, There are some options. It's a oh, powerful yeah. army, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. But that as always, the, the most always... important thing is that you choose cool models. Choose what you like, <laughs> what you think looks good, what you think is fun. That's also very important. I mean, that's the basic tip always. Mm-hmm. Well, let, let me just ask you something also, so it's because I, I, I just I took something for granted when we talked about the uh, uh, Spetsnaz Walker uh, here, the Anatoly, which is one of my favorite and one of your favorite as well, Magnus, we know. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. When I was in the app now, it didn't have a salvo anymore. And if that's the case, that I'm going to say things that, People don't want to hear on audio. So uh, please tell me that must be a snuffle. That sounds like a typo to me. Yeah, okay. So uh, you should probably send a bug report. No, I just did. Okay. Uh, here, <laughs> verbally. Very <laughs> fix that. Right. <laughs> fix that quick. Or else the Spetsnaz is out of, outside your house in the morning. <laughs> you, Dustin List app maker, you. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, but ooh, could we go into a rant on the Dust and List app as well? Just a quick... Is it okay? Yeah, we could do a, yeah. a bit of a detour there. Yeah, good. Because uh, I, I saw something on the um, Facebook, and uh, not only because it was Swedes who were posting about it, but, but I actually s- feel strongly about this. Because uh, I got... I don't know who posted it and if what that person actually meant, but someone was feeling that... Well, the question was... Can't the app has some sort of uh, little marker on the cards in the app to show that this card has been changed from the original uh, physical. Outlet, yeah, yeah. Physical, physical card? And I think that is actually something that is just so... It has to happen because that is not... It can't be a big thing. Put a little blue dot or red cross or what the friggin' else. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it must it's be simple. Th- as far as I know, there are very, very few cards that has been changed. Yeah, and that but was the for argument for yeah, them not to do it. Yeah, on exactly. The app. But, but that that's uh, of course an argument that you can have. But mm-hmm. uh, then it should also not be a big job to do it. And for exactly. anyone coming into the game now, it's it's completely impossible to know these things. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that helps when these situations arise, then when people find the discrepancies between the cards and the app and wonder which one is actually correct. Definitely. So them just posting just that little symbol on top of the name or something like that, and yeah. it can be easy. If that's a little blue dot or something, you know this has been changed. Uh, or if it's just have a wrench perhaps under under work or under construction or, or mm. they know this is not correct at the moment but they are working on it they will fix it have the little wrench up there like on this Anatoly so you don't have to have like a heart seizure just when you play in your mm. tournament you go I don't have Salvo anymore mm. and not have Salvo and perhaps this also since you didn't know this Magnus and you are the next tournament organizer you don't have to have this big argument or problem in your next tournament Am I going to sell one? I'm not going to sell one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because that's could be just so annoying. And it's, once again, so small amount of time that this, if it's just a few cards, yeah, they make we, the we, we know that the app is updated fairly frequently, uh, yeah. which is good, of course, but you have to remember that it's still, still sort of a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have seen these questions pop up every now and then, and the answer is, as far as I have uh, seen or heard, uh, send a bug report. So that's that's my kind of uh, uh, wish that anyone using the app, and if you see some kind of discrepancy, 
instead of just like posting it on the Facebook or whatever, send the bug report because yeah. then then the guys behind it will take a look at it yeah. and fix it in the next update, I guess. So then the app will be more and more accurate. And I actually did this just, I think it was yesterday or something. I, I was looking through some allied units and thinking about what to play here next. If, mm-hmm. if I'm going to play allies, I still haven't decided. And I noticed that as far as I saw at least, looking at the allied vehicles, none of the vehicles had any designation of large or huge. Hmm. When I looked at the app, maybe I was just blind. I'm not really sure about it. But I looked at some of the vehicles and I saw, okay, this doesn't say anything about that. Well, interesting. So, yeah. yeah. That's another one then. And I sent a bug report about it. Yeah, good. So um, that's the kind of takeaway. Send a bug report so we get (laughs) (laughs) updates. All right. uh, Our next question comes from our Danish friend Lasse Dahl. Uh, Regarding competitions, do you think they have impact on how the game is balanced? And should they? I think the answer to both of these questions is yes, in my opinion. Um, We have seen changes to the uh, balance of uh, individual units and... uh, regards to rules being changed like for instance the cheat death rule now recently i think that's uh, very specifically just seeing how people use those units with that in tournament and competition play yeah i mean people like to compete yeah in anything it could be sports or games or or you know music or whatnot so people like to compete so they are going to have tournaments and competitions playing dust there's really no way of stopping this even if you don't like competitions even if you don't go to dust tournaments Mm. other people will and at those tournaments you will probably see the best armies you will probably see the most like broken combos possible (laughs) which is kind of a good way to see how strong is this rule set Mm. because if a rule set kind of break breaks down if you if you if you can't play tournaments because the 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 combos are just ridiculous uh, then something has to be done so i think competitions is very good for a game because yeah you you get a measurement of how things work there of course far from all games are played in competitions so it shouldn't you know like completely be based on that the game should also have some, you know, pure, like, fun, cool stuff. Absolutely. Uh, so that isn't really, you know, the, the all and all of it. Yeah, well, I would really think that uh, you sh- there should be an opening for, um, like, the base rules, which you play regularly, and then you have an appendix, a really well-thought-out appendix which were just for the tournaments, which dwelled a little bit more into some specific areas that perhaps the regular rules doesn't have to. Mm. Uh, So you have that special appendix rule book that you go to when you go to tournaments. Um, Something like the breeding out of, like the storm document that we have here in, and I'm so glad you've made that, Magnus, and I really wished that could could grow through the years into a tournament specific appendix for the entire game and then be a complement to the rule book. Uh, next question comes from Michael Sherman and Michael asks, have you heard any updates with the on-demand order option mentioned previously in interviews? Wasn't this going to cover primed and premium items on hold in the global store as well as other smaller out of print and not previously offered items? Um, this is actually very inside baseball. We haven't mm-hmm. heard much of this, but luckily Paolo yeah. uh, Thank got you, in Paolo. <laughs> yeah, and answered this question for us. And I think we should actually mention this here for people uh, who are not on Facebook. And Paolo asked us, no, sorry, this uh, on demand uh, only concerns special models which are difficult to stock and manufacture. Uh, They are made by order and they ship 30 days after you make the order, like uh, the cranes that we have been seeing for the mercenaries and also the the flying banana, I think he used as uh, as an example. Uh, 
Mm. So that is very spe- specific uh, types of models. But those cranes aren't out yet, are no. they? No, no, good, good. So no, I don't, no. haven't missed anything. That's no, this uh, is some still upcoming stuff. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we got a question from the Game Chefs Limited. <laughs> I know you have some teasers on the upcoming Paradise Lost book release this coming Christmas. What would you like to see in this book besides scenarios and background? Well, to be honest, we haven't seen that much from it. We know it's coming. Uh, I would say if I hope to see something specific, more just stories, more just interesting uh, narrative surrounding specific characters that one was one of my favorite stuff uh, in the previous expansion in the uh, in Hellgate yeah and just to have... see stuff and read about the heroes that we are actually playing with I I love that yeah and the the Hellgate ended with a massive world chaos more yeah. or less uh, so it's just ripe for stories yeah exactly so yeah it has so much potential to see both new heroes and old heroes in new shapes like we discussed earlier here uh, but if he asks he asks uh, besides scenarios and background uh, um, I don't know that because that's what they usually pack in the uh, expansions uh, New scenarios, new background, new units, and and their background and stats. So uh, I don't know. Well, I would could add the wonderful pictures that have been they made. I hope they continue with the line with the, all those. I mean, like when they had Rakete and 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 uh, yeah, the those child, diorama those, uh, pictures yeah. and uh, um, also the artwork. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the artwork in the in the previous expansions books has been wonderful. Yeah, uh, and also something that uh, could be interesting if just more optional rules like the weather rules for instance mm-hmm. uh, if you could use more stuff like that that you could have modularly and use in your scenarios and your games that could be a very cool addition I think yeah, yeah. Sure, sure something like uh, specific for a certain area of uh, the world if perhaps that area of the world would have a special rule or something that would be super cool if that would happen but just going back to the pictures as well there uh I would love to have perhaps like a little appendix, perhaps even with a little bit more pictures, inspiring pictures so that you can sit and drool on. Oh, I can paint them this. Oh, that's a good way to put out my terrain. And uh, well, yeah, perhaps have the because that actually in the scenarios so far, we had no pictures, diorama pictures on the scenarios. We only have the drawn maps. So that's perhaps, a very uh, interesting. That could be really cool just to see an example of how this scenario could look in yeah. an actual setup game. Yeah, 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 mm, yeah sure. Uh, since they seem to be doing that quite frequently with all the pictures, that perhaps is not an extra effort for them. Uh, perhaps they can do that a little bit um, easy and uh, not overexert themselves doing some extra pictures on that so uh, yeah it could uh, be nice and a good way to to show off the really really good looking line of terrain pieces so yeah sure yeah this question comes from patrick doty how many points should an aircraft carrier cost and magnus if 42 you don't, <laughs> magnus you don't know he's building a board out of an aircraft hangar oh, for right, one right. of the uh, it's the American <laughs> special thing because they will have an uh, air battle oh no the, yeah air battle between airplanes coming to try to take out that uh, yeah uh, aircraft carrier and it, it it looks it could be amazing he's just uh, did it with, in 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 wood right now with some uh, some base paints on the base plates but. It, it, it just the potential of this board. Yeah, it sounds awesome, but I'm sticking to my answer. Forty-two <laughs> points. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm good with that. The answer to life, <laughs> the universe, and everything. Yeah. So I think that's the answer to Patrick Doty, actually. <laughs> yeah. Forty-two. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that guy does amazing stuff, and uh, it's this. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to his next pictures on this uh, aircraft carrier. Very cool. And our final question this episode comes from Jason Hine. Uh, The USMC Gator might be released this 
year. We now know that the U- SSU will have a new starter out this year too. And I've seen more about the new SSU starter than the USMC Gator. Uh, and I'm curious to know if smaller units or established faction units may get less attention than larger slash new factions when it comes to the showing and presenting and releasing. And I think that's probably a good point. I mean, there's been a lot of focus on the mythos and on the Japanese lately because those are the new fac- newest factions um, and of course uh, you want I, I think the studio wants to focus on them to bring in new players and get older players more options um, so yeah well, what do you what do you think there uh, I think that they have some kind of business plan and strategy of what to release and when to release but of course that can change and I think part of it is probably the creative process I mean, Mm -hmm. Paolo does a lot of work and uh, of course he has guys working for him as well. And sometimes there could be some kind of snag on the way that they have to know we have to like redo this or think again or one idea maybe didn't work and they have to to try again. Um, I have no idea in this case, but I kind of think that the especially i mean in this specific case with the new ssu starter coming up uh which will it looks like it will contain these uh, uh, steel guards that we talked about and i'm fairly sure that the steel guards are popular many Mm -hmm. many people like them yep so i guess that's kind of a more important product than than the gator i'm i'm purely guessing here but i think the this starter will sell a lot more than the gator also, I think a reason, uh, something that Paolo has touched on uh, the last couple of times we have been pleasure to have his company, is that the the mold situation, he, they have a certain amount of budget each year for the molds. And the bigger molds, the bigger the costs. And the I would guess that the uh, uh, Steel Guards uh, infantry are much easier to make, cost efficient, efficiently, so it's easier to produce new infantry units than tanks and walkers and stuff uh, so i think that is has a play in it as well yeah you, um, i mean yeah, we have to remember that the studio is still a small company compared yeah. to a lot of the others so of course they have budgets they have to think about what to do and when to do it so um yeah that's just just the way how it works um so sure the the usmc gator would be cool but it's going to come out when it come out that's mm. Yeah. So let's round this episode off with some tournament talk. Uh, first off, we had the European Championship with uh, which Luda went to, and I was supposed to, mm. but unfortunately, I had some last <laughs> last minute uh, complications, which meant I wasn't able to attend. Really, really sad about that because it's from everything. It's it looked from over here. It seemed to be an absolutely awesome event. Oh yeah, it was great. It was uh, everything it should be. Uh, it was another step upwards. I know Marika wanted a little bit more players and perhaps there was some snag there where they had to change the venue because of the hot air and the hot climate, I mean, so they had to have fresh air. But he, he fixed, Yeah, you supplied uh, the hot air. So. Yeah, yeah, of course I did, but uh, at least <laughs> in small patches because I was... Uh, I was I was a little bit too worked out when I finally got to go there, so I and had a million things in my head. So I, I, I don't think I don't know if we have any clips actually from that tournament, or if uh, Johannes will be able to salvage something that I try to record. Uh, but I, so I went a little bit me, me, me in that tournament and focused on myself. Um, but it paid off. You uh, placed yeah, well, really well, so congratulations to that. Well, really well. It was okay. I was uh, <laughs> I, I, I was the best Swede, but I, everyone knows I am the best Swede, so we don't have to talk about that. It, it, it just seems like I'm boosting myself if we do that, you know? It, nah, well, no, sorry. I'm still uh, way ahead. Uh, you way were the be- best Swede of those who went there. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, exactly. because we all know Johannes have won it. I only have a silver and a bronze now, so I'm still... Still way behind Johannes. I have to, you know, get him someday. But uh, and that's of course one of my life goals. As long as Johannes is still playing, I have to beat him in a big tournament. Of now, seriously, it, it was good games. 
It was very interesting. Uh, a big shout out to Martin who did this first tournament, uh, who in this last game still could have won it. But um, well, the, the the reigning champion is just he's just too good. Uh, and uh, I uh, also I would like to give a shout out to Pavel. We had a great game. Uh, I I know it got a little tense in the end, but we both want to win it, and I got the feeling we were all good and that was the game i drew i had four wins and one draw um and drawing with pavel felt right uh actually um so but it was good scenarios uh, good setup it was um fun all together um and uh, well yeah it was a really really nice tournament uh, heads off to the poles again it's uh, they they do it great uh -huh. And um, also, of course, heads up. Uh, also, hats off to uh, the Germans that shared the Powell's apartment with me. Uh, it, they were great to be with. And uh, as uh, well, my intro there, the Cabo Wolven has something to do with Thomas. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, I'll just leave it to, with that. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, it, it sounded and, and looked very nice from what I saw from it. And uh, yeah, I sincerely hope that I will be able to make it next year. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be we'll fantastic. We'll start making travel plans now. Mm, so. yeah. <laughs> then we have uh, also, like we mentioned, a smallish uh, tournament uh, locally here in Gothenburg very soon. Yeah, it's just a week from now. We're going to... Um, have a showdown again. We'll yes. see how many turns up. I can't. I don't know how many is uh, is already registered, but it's mm. going to be a small one. And uh, uh, again, I'm not able to attend because I'm uh, I'm vacationing in Scotland. Right. <laughs> right. Well, uh, we are in one way envious and in one way sad, <laughs> but uh, in one way happy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just just for everyone who's attending. I'm bringing frogs this time, so don't bring anything that can't shoot on infantry force, please. Because then you will have a bad time. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I will finish last because I have not mastered the frogs, but I love to play them. And this is just the time when, when well, it's been too long now. So now the frogs are taking the streets in, in Gothenburg. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll wave to you from across the, from across the sea and uh, say hi to the Loch Ness Monster and give it three fifty from you. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. So you, you will be there in, in uh, heart and spirit. Yes, of course. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that we will have more tournaments qu quite fairly soon again in Gothenburg because I know people are itching to have their own tournaments. And if none of them do it, and if you're not on to mm -hmm. a GDD 11 pretty sh soon, I will definitely do something myself because we have to start playing more tournaments here in Gothenburg. It's just, it's been too long now as we have had this sleepy time and now it's time to wake up and start killing each other again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's kind of how, how i feel as well so wake yeah. up and smell the dust yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that said we're hoping there's going to be a lot of uh, miniaturized battles going on in our near future so until then our dear listeners thank you uh, from me johannes and from magnus and from lara and we will see you on the battlefield Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.